Good afternoon, Ash Creek family. It is Thursday, and once again, I am happy to be able to be here with you. I am coming to you from our sanctuary, where Sunday morning we will meet once again for worship. I hope that you will come. Remember that we are making some adjustments to uh, our uh, meeting together. If you come at 9.30 for one of the 9.30 services, uh, we are still asking people to wear a mask at 9.30. And if you come to the 10.45 service, then mask wearing is optional, but it's encouraged and it's probably a good idea. But, um, but if you are uncomfortable wearing a mask, come at 10.45. So we'll look forward to seeing you this Sunday and I'm excited about what we're, what's going to happen. My understanding is that this Sunday morning, we will be able to live feed the contemporary worship service at 930. Uh, we'll see if that works. And then I hope that on the next Sunday morning, we will be able to live feed both worship services, <clears throat> uh, one at 930 and one at 1045. So we'll see if, if, uh, if, that, if that works. Want to remind you that Saturday we will be passing out food once again. Uh, we think that we can uh, do that by 1030. If you want to volunteer to help with that, if you would be here about 945 or so, people come early. Um, I saw in the newspaper that it was announced that it was at 11 and we did it at 11 last week, but we're moving up to, to 1030 this week because we were able to get the food pretty early last time. We hope that it's going to come early this time. So I'm looking forward to that. I want to say uh, that the youth met last night for uh, youth group in the park. They had a great group that showed up, and they had a wonderful time from 6 to 7.30. And we'll be having youth group in the park. John is leading that uh, each Wednesday night. Please note that, and I'm sure you've been keeping up with it, that it does look like that the coronavirus is continuing to spread. Um, we would need to be very careful. So when we come on Sunday morning, we will still, in all worship services, we will still be practicing social distancing. That won't be hard to do. We have the sanctuary uh, and the meeting place set up uh, for that. So just be prepared uh, for that when you come Sunday morning. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, as we come today to read from your word and to think about the word that you might have for us this morning or this afternoon, we come again to pray for those who are sick and for those who care for the sick. But we also know there are other things in our world and in our society that have caused great unrest. We live in a world that is uh, chaotic and seems to be out of control, but uh, we are thankful that you still have us in your hands and that, and that no matter what happens in this world, that uh, it's not out of control for you. You know what's happening. You know what's happening to us. You know what's happening to the people of this world. And so we trust you uh, to take care of us, and we trust that your kingdom uh, will grow and that uh, your kingdom will come. We are uh, often anxious in times of unrest, and yet help us to remember those great words that Jesus said, not to worry, and that uh, as long as you are our shepherd, that we know that we can trust you, even in times of unrest. And we pray that these times of unrest would be precursors to the emergence of a more just world. Thank you for your working in this world, even in difficult times. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the first passages, well, not the first passage of Scripture, but when I decided that I was going to become a, a minister um, or a pastor, one of the first passages of Scripture that I ever preached on was in Isaiah chapter 6. And I was thinking about Isaiah 6 today and thinking about how that uh, was a passage of Scripture that had something to say to us 
uh, in these days as well. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through the first part of verse 9. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, and with two wings they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorpost and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. He said, Go and tell this people. This passage of scripture was an inspiration to me uh, because uh, I felt that I was hearing God ask, who will I send and who will go for us? And I was excited to be able to say, I'll go. I think all of us have had those kinds of experiences when we have felt God's uh, calling on our life and uh, whether it was in professional ministry or not, but all of us have said, I'll go. But this passage of scripture reminds me of several things. First of all, it was it happened in the year that King Uzziah died. Uh, you may not know a lot about King Uzziah, but King Uzziah was a good king of Israel, one of the few. And for Isaiah, this was a catastrophe. He had been the king for 40 years, the only king that Isaiah had ever known. And when Uzziah died, it was a catastrophe for Isaiah but it was also a catastrophe for the whole nation. Um, we have known many catastrophes since then, and we are in one way living through catastrophe even now. But look what happened. In the midst of catastrophe, God, uh, Isaiah had a, uh, an experience with God. He was at church, he was in the temple, and he says that he saw the Lord high and lifted up the train of his robe filling the temple. And he saw uh, angels accompanying him, and the angels were singing. And he had this experience with God that would not have come except for the catastrophe that he had experienced. I can just envision Isaiah weeping and wailing because of the catastrophe of the death of his friend and his king. And he had gone to church in order to pray, in order to weep before God. And while he was there, he had this experience with God. Uh, and in the midst of that experience, he recognized that when he compared himself with the Almighty God, he realized how far he had fallen short. And he says to himself this great confession, and he says to God this great confession of conviction. He says, Woe is me, I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. What he's saying there is that he's a sinner and he lives among people who are sinners. He recognizes that in his own life, in his own soul, there is sin, but he knows that it goes beyond that. He knows that in his whole culture, his whole society, that it is eaten up with a system of sin. I think that that's certainly a part of the way that we live now. We look in our own hearts and in our own souls, and we understand the sin that we have, but, um, but also that we live among uh, a people of unclean lips. We are all sinners, and it's, all, it's bigger than we are, even. And so, in this experience that he had with God, he recognizes that when he compares himself, when he compares his nation with the glory and the 
perfectness of God that he and his nation have fallen terribly short. But all is not lost because then there is this cleansing. One of the seraphs, it says, flew to him with a live coal in his hand that was, came from the altar where they made sacrifices to God. And that coal, he touched it to his lips and it singed his lips. And I can kind of th think about how much that must have hurt. But it was symbolic of God forgiving sin and burning away all that w was uh, sinful in Isaiah. And it was even symbolic of God burning away the sin of his nation. And so there is this cleansing that God provides. And then there is this commissioning. After Isaiah confronts God, after he confesses his sin and is convicted of his sin, and after he receives this forgiveness, this cleansing, God says, who will I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah said, here I am, send me. That's something all of us could say. We may be in the midst of catastrophe. We may even be in the midst of confessing sin and realizing uh, the depth of our sin. But God still needs people to do his work. God still needs people to be commissioned to go out into the world and to tell people good news. That can be our task in these difficult days. We live in days that are dark and days that are difficult, but our task as God's people is to recognize the forgiveness that we have received and to go and give that good news to others as well so that there can be light in the darkness. Well, I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow, tomorrow at 1.30. Um, if, um, if I change that, I'll let you know. But I, as far as I know, it will be at 1.30 tomorrow. I will look forward to seeing you Sunday here at church. Remember our new rules, 9.30, wear a mask, 10.45, masks are optional. So I'll look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Stay home and stay well.